Hey everyone, it's Miranda Hughes. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. Um, pretty random, so if you want to keep up, you're just going to have to subscribe. Sorry. <laughs> I uh, have a very crazy busy schedule, so uh, that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. But anyways, uh, the song that God gave me today is What Hurts the Most, and it's by, you know, Rascal Flatts, but originally it is sung by Mark Willis, um, but this is the Rascal Flatts version, and I love Rascal Flatts. If you guys don't, I'm sorry, but that's the song God gave me. Um, this one is, you know, pretty interesting. Um, it, it kind of gets a little confusing, so I'm just going to, you know, pray real quick because I hope, I pray that God helps me break this down in a way that he broke it down to me um, so that I can break it down to you. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to keep up and understand, but I hope it makes sense when I get done speaking about it. So anyways, I'm just going to jump into it. Uh, dear God, thank you for having me today. Thank you for having the subscribers that I have. Thank you for the viewers that are watching this and the person that is watching this right now. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present and just being a part of this and allowing me to be a part of your plan, your vision, and just being a part of your kingdom and doing whatever it is that you've called me to do. Thank you for the strength and the endurance and the patience that you've given me and to the person watching this. Thank you, Lord, for having them not give up including myself and to just keep going strong through your love your grace and your patience lord um lord i just ask that whoever's watching this that they take this word back to you and that if there's anything that i leave out or if there's something that they don't understand lord i just pray that they pray to you about it and that you are able to break it down even further um to the person watching this so that they can have better fuller understanding and knowledge of this message of what you've revealed to me about what's going on with our kingdom spouses. So thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I give you my voice. I give you this platform. I give you every part of me um, for you to have your will, your will and your way and not mine. Um, please, Lord, allow this to be um, an opportunity for you to have glory and not myself. And thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me and the person watching this. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So this is What Hurts the Most by Rascal Flats. And this is about your God ordained, or it's about the prodigal, but it's mainly about us, the God ordained spouse, the person who is waiting on the prodigal to return. So again, in the last song, it was Try Losing One by Tyler Braden. Um, I will try to link that below, um, just so those of you who have not watched that video, you can find it easily for that music video, and then you can kind of see what I'm talking about, because basically when your person left a second time, they're hurt, you are hurt, everyone's hurt, okay? Um, maybe this person, again, maybe they're running from God, maybe they are just angry and upset that you haven't come back yet and they're feeling rejected by you or maybe they are feeling upset because they don't feel like they're measuring up to you or maybe God's told them to come back to you and they know it but they're too scared and they just chickened out and they decided to just nope I'm just I'm not gonna deal with it nope um, I tried it once and it didn't work out and I mustered the strength and now I just can't do it no more or maybe like I said they just wanted to keep running because they just still think they want to do things their way. So whatever the reason is for why they blocked us, unfriended us, or unfollowed us, or whatever it is, um, God knows what it is. But this is the song that he gave me for after Try Losing One. And again, this is about us, the people that are waiting on their prodigal. So it's, yeah, how you feel after your prodigal walked out on you a second time. Um, for me, I was bawling. I was crying my eyes out. I was just like slightly depressed for like two days just because, you know, I, I had to spend a lot of time in prayer and just clinging to God to get me through it because I felt like I couldn't breathe again. It was just like, we're seriously going through this again, again. And God's like, 
you know, just bear with me. Keep hanging on. Don't focus on what you lost or them walking out. He's like, just keep praying, keep pressing, keep going, keep persevering. And it was hard. It was really, really hard. And it was extremely painful. But, you know, God got me through it and he's going to get you through it, too. So this is the first part of this song. And again, the song is what hurts the most. And it's, I can take the rain on the, on the roof of this empty house. That don't bother me. I can take a few tears now and then and just let them out. I'm not afraid to cry every once in a while. Even though going on with you gone still upsets me. There are days every now and again I pretend I'm okay. But that's not what gets me. Okay, so the first part of that is, you know, you're used to quiet and being alone so like you know like when you hear the rain and things like that it might be soothing or it might just kind of make you a little more sad just because it's a rainy day you're feeling gloomy that you're already missing your person you're already wishing things were different in your life so even though a rainy day you know might have bothered you now it's at a point where it's like you kind of find it relaxing like because you have God's perspective in your life um something like that don't bother you no more. Um, the second part is, you know, taking a few tears now and then just letting them out, you know, crying every once in a while, you know, you might be crying out to God and you're not afraid to be real. Um, you're just, you're wanting your requests and your concerns and your fears and, you know, praises to be made known to God. And you're not afraid to cry out to him. You're not afraid to let him know what's really on your mind and in your heart. And you're just being open with God about it. Um, The third part of this, you know, going on, it even says, even though going on with you gone still upsets me. You know, so you're trying to be strong, even though it feels like your world shattered again. You know, you feel like it's like a backwards feeling. So obviously that's not going to feel good. And then the next part is... What hurts the most was being so close and having so much to say and watching you walk away and never knowing what could have been and not seeing that loving you is what I was trying to do. So again, this is like us speaking on this part. It's like you were so close to coming back to me and I just wanted to love you and I just wanted to express it to you or show you, you know, how I could make your world right or make you feel better and you know you had a lot to say but you ended up watching this person walk away from you again like you watched them literally physically walk away or maybe you watched them unfriend you or unfollow you like you could tell that you just sensed in your spirit that they were close and then one day you get on your social media and they're not on there anymore like they blocked you they unfollowed you or whatever and you're just like not like you were checking every day But you just, you had this anticipation, this expectation that they were about to reach out, but because they didn't, um, and they did the opposite, instead of reaching out to you, they actually unfriended you, unfollowed you, or ran away from you, or moved away from you. Now you're like, okay, I was not prepared for that. What happened? Like, I was totally taken by surprise on that, and now it's like, you had to stretch your faith with Christ even more because now you're like, God, that backfired in my face. That's not where I thought that was going. That what the heck happened? Um, yeah. And it just, it just really, really hurt. And all you wanted to do was show them love and you didn't want to take anything from them. You just, you actually wanted to pour into them. You wanted to, um, to give to them. You wanted to give them a good memory or a good smile or you wanted to give them like a good laugh. You wanted to give them time to get to know you. You wanted to give them a date or you wanted to give them flowers or chocolates or you wanted to give them, um, hopefully not money, but I mean, you wanted to give them a second chance. You wanted to give them prayers. You you just wanted to give them the world basically and they were just like, nah, I'm going to put the weight of the world on you instead and run away. So it was not a very pleasant feeling. But the next part of this song, this is where, guys, I'm sorry, it gets really, really confusing. Because it's like the the person who, who wrote this song 
it's kind of like breaks off into two ways, like two different perspectives. The first one is, as I just read a minute ago, it sounds like the person was watching the other person walk away and it hurt them. But then at the same time, the next verse is talking about something that they did. They had a regret. And it's like, now this is just confusing because now it makes it sound like the person walked away. That's what it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the first verse, it's talking about them watching someone walk away and it was hurting them and it made it sound like it wasn't their fault. Like they were the ones being hurt. They were the ones that was did nothing they had no fault and it was just someone walking out of their life and they had no control of it and then in the next verse it's talking about this person having the same person having regrets and basically not saying what they should have and it's almost like they're at fault for why the person walked away so it just did not make sense and it was like god i'm gonna need you to break this down because it doesn't seem to fit what it is that you know, he's trying to tell me because I thought it was just supposed to be about the God ordained spouse, but then I read it again and it's like, well, it sounds like it could be the prodigal speaking. So who's speaking about this? Who's this song for? And it's kind of both. It's kind of like a two parter. Like, you know, the first part is talking about the God ordained spouse. The middle part of the song is talking about what your prodigal is feeling. Um, and at the very, very end, basically, But that's why it's like a two in one. It's like for both of y'all. But this next part is it's hard to deal with the pain of losing you everywhere I go, but I'm doing it. It's hard to force that smile when I see our old friends and I'm alone, still harder, getting up, getting dressed, living with this regret. But I know if I could do it over, I would trade, give away all the words that I saved in my heart that I left unspoken. Okay, so that doesn't sound like you this or myself. This sounds like a prodigal, you know? See what I'm saying? It's like a little twisted. But I hope it makes sense. But basically, um, the first part where it says, it's hard to deal with the pain of losing you everywhere I go, but I'm doing it. Basically, you know, there. this is where for you, it's like both of us. Um, you know, it's... The God ordained spouse, you know, it's hard of hard enough to deal with the pain of losing that person again, but they're doing it and we're doing it through prayer and God's strength and scriptures, you know, and community, like maybe a church or friends or something like that to kind of like help us get through this setback or this little plot twist. Your person, on the other hand, the prodigal, you know, it's hard to deal with the pain of losing you everywhere I go, but I'm doing it. For them, they're like turning to alcohol, possibly drugs. They are, and if they're not doing that, they're just, they are trying to trust God. They're just trying to be alone and they're trying to figure things out for themselves instead of just, you know, doing what God told them to do, which is just apologize. It'll all get better. But they're just kind of dragging it out and just like, oh, you know, like it sucks that I, that, you know, you didn't want to be with me. But instead of them contacting you to find out, they're just, they're making all these assumptions in their head. And most of them are probably not even true. But, you know, the devil's good like that. And pride is good like that. The next verse is, um, that God spoke to me about was, I would trade, give away all the words that I saved in my heart that I left unspoken. So again, this is the prodigal's perspective and they regret not telling you how they felt about you sooner. It's hard for them to do even the simplest of tasks because you are constantly in their heart and on their mind. Like it's to the point where wherever they look, wherever they go, whatever they do, whoever they're talking to, God is not letting up. Like they are right smack dab on your mind and in their heart. Like they cannot get away from you. They cannot get away from your name, your first or last name. They can't get away of things that remind them of you. Maybe it's a scent, um, like a perfume or cologne. Maybe it's a favorite food or it's an inside joke or it's just your favorite color. Like whatever it is, it's just they're constantly running into things that are reminding them of you 
every day and every any moment of the day it's just constant um the, and then the last part is God is not allowing your person to go a single day or night to forget you he's like no this needs to happen and it needs to happen sooner and if you're not going to budge then I'm just going to torment you until you do what you need to do and it's not that God's being cruel or mean to your person it's just God has a purpose and a plan for you and your person to be together. Again, this is for God's kingdom to give him glory. You know, we have assignments. We have ministries to do, books to write. We have um, online courses to build. We have businesses to build. We have children to make. There's like all kinds of things that God has put on his agenda for you and your person to accomplish. And you can't accomplish this on your own. You're going to need your person and your person is going to need you. So God needs them to realize that, you know, a lot of your pain could just go away if you would just simply apologize and do it sooner rather than later. But since you're, you know, kind of dragging it out, I'm going to speed it up and I'm going to remind you of this person to the point where you're just going to have to say, okay, God, and just go talk to them. That is the only way it's going to stop and the only way it's going to get better is for them to reach out to you. And again, this is for people where God said, do not reach out to your prodigal. He has not given you the sign or the confirmation to speak to them um, because they have a pride issue, because they are delaying and they are procrastinating and they are, God knows what they're doing, you know, because we're not on communication terms. God wants your person to come to you. Um, he wants them to contact you is what I mean. So, and then the very last part is of this song that I'm going to read about because the rest of it is just lyrics that I've already read. Um, the very last line is not seeing that loving you. That's what I was trying to do. So again, your prodigal was trying to come back to you to love you, but they didn't know how, so they ran further. So they were in attempt to come back to you. But again, just like in the last video that I discussed all of that, um, if you have not watched it, again, I will try to link that down below so you can go back and watch that one. But to summarize, they just felt like they didn't measure up. They felt like they didn't, they weren't worthy of you. <clears throat> Excuse me, worthy of you once God revealed to them who you were that you are the person that God chose for them to be married to and to live life with and, and have these assignments with. And even though that God revealed it to them, they didn't either believe it or they just didn't know how to come back to you because they're too afraid after everything that they put you through and everything that they've done. And again, just like how in this verse it said, or in this song it says, I would trade, give away all the words that I saved in my heart that I left unspoken. So this person more than likely loved you, cared about you, wanted to be with you from the beginning. Um, even if they didn't agree with you or didn't want to be as serious as you in the relationship, they there was something there. Like they really did see that you were a genuine person. They saw that you um, were, you know, about God. They saw that you were serious and that you're not going to screw them over, um, for lack of a better word, I guess. Uh, they saw your worth, but they don't see their, they didn't see their own. So that's why they ran. And when God revealed to them that, no, they want them to be with you, it kind of, you know, they kind of got confident. And that's why in your spirit, you felt like they were getting closer because you were getting excited and it's like you could tell this was about to happen and then they backed out and it was like because they felt like in their mind that they had already lost you because they were like embarrassed excuse me that of what they did or didn't do to you or for you excuse me and they didn't think that that you were going to actually take them back and so they ran further um and that's all there is on this one. And obviously that's why, you know, what hurts the most is very fitting because th you guys were so close. You were so close from having a breakthrough, but because they chickened out, it's kind of back to square one where it's like, okay, you ran for me again. Now I'm God's going to have to reel you back in and get you to come back because I just have to stand firm in my faith. Those of us who are waiting for a prodigal, we're just told to stand firm in our faith until otherwise. 
Um, obviously work on the assignments that God has called you to do while you're waiting. But I mean, we shouldn't be stalking this person's Facebook or any other social media. We shouldn't be trying to reach out to their friends or family members to try to manipulate or control to make things happen or speed up in our own time. No, like we're putting this in God's hands. We're trusting God and we're allowing him to be the one to reveal to us when it's the right time to reach out if he wants us to. If he doesn't, then if he doesn't want us doing that, then we need to accept that and we need to be able to um, just be ready whenever it is that God sends that person back into our lives. And that just means prepare as much as possible. Um, even though it's sad and it hurts, you know, God is still in the midst of everything and he's still working everything out. So again, Romans eight twenty eight. 28, uh, you'll hear me say that a lot. It's like one of my absolute favorite verses, but yeah, you know, your person was really close to coming back. They bailed again, not really a hundred percent sure exactly why, other than maybe they felt like they didn't measure up to you or they didn't think that they could do what it is that God revealed or called them to do with you. Um, they, maybe they were just afraid you would not take them back and that's all it was and they took off again. So God has to go get them and get them back on track. So that may take a little while. So just be patient. Keep trusting God. Keep persevering. Keep walking in your worth and keep knowing who you are because you're a child of the God. child of God. You are, you know... A king's kid and God if he told you something if he promised you something he's not a man that shall lie like he is gonna keep true to his word so you just got to give him the time that it takes for his word to come to pass okay I know we get tired of hearing that but keep working on you know cleaning up your house or working on your business building your business uh, writing a book drawing, uh, using your talents and gifts, whatever it is that God has given you, keep focusing on God and focusing on what it is that he's told you to do. And it's not going to completely take all this pain away, but it's just going to help you not sit there in your bedroom crying all the time, wondering what you did wrong or why this person isn't back in your life. Okay. You didn't do anything wrong. It's not exactly about you on that. It's just your person hasn't accepted their worth and they haven't forgiven themselves and they just got it a little twisted as far as they they're not quite sure how to come back to you and God's working on them on that okay I can guarantee you that so I love you guys have a wonderful night or day and God bless y'all and also if you haven't yet hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos because I am pretty random. Um, and also, if you feel led to sow into this ministry, please do so. Every little bit helps. Um, if you can't sow into this ministry um, you know, financially, that's okay. Um, I also accept prayers and positive vibes and good words and all that stuff. Um, I pray over you guys as often as I possibly can. So thank you for anyone who subscribed and has given prayers. Um, again, if you feel led to sow into this ministry, please do so. Um, if you guys have a channel, um, I would love to check you guys out. Uh, you know, I God's always been teaching me that you can learn from anyone, anywhere, at any time. Um, and so, like, if you guys have a channel or anything like that, I'd love to hear from you guys and see what you guys are up to. But for me right now, it's just doing these music video prophetic words and um, doing school and working on things like that and having my job, playing with my dogs, um, gardening, things like that. So I am pretty busy, but I do need to get on here a lot more and keep up with the, the work that God's given me to do. Uh but I'd love to hear from you guys. Again, if you guys are interested in needing me to pray specifically over you, um, you can put it down in the comments, whatever your prayer request is. Or if it's something that you feel is very private, <clears throat> excuse me, but you would actually prefer that you either be a no not like anonymous, but just like not in front of everyone on YouTube and you just won't need a prayer, 
You can always email me. Um, I'll put all the information down in the description box. Uh, I have a personal email that you guys can, you know, reach out to me on. Um, yeah, I also have a podcast called Faith Strong. So if you guys want to check that out, it's on Anchor or Spotify. Just, you know, type that in and check it out. And there's plenty of podcast, uh, not videos, but podcast episodes of other teachings that I do. But on this channel, it's just for the music stuff mainly. Um, God does have me spit out some other videos from time to time. So thank you for watching. Y'all have a blessed day and, you know, catch you on my next video. So bye.